Okay. Hi, everyone. I think I'm on. There we go. Sorry for the glare. I have the lights on because it's getting dark outside. It's going to rain, um, which is good for the plants, but not really for us to be outside. Um, so, yeah. So, let me just do what I need to do here. Make sure we're on. And then I have a fun project for you. I actually showed my team last night. We had a little team meeting on, well, it wasn't really Zoom. It was Facebook, but it was kind of like Zoom. And uh, they liked it. So let me just make sure. There we go. We are on. Excellent. Alanita, you're here already. Perfect. Hello. All right. We have Ruby. We have some, actually, I think Ruby, you're a new person to me. So hello and welcome. Awesome. Yeah, I have a great project for you today. I think you will like it. And you can adapt it to however, um, whatever you need it to be. We're going to make um, it's kind of a crap. <laughs> grass name cash cards or cards for cash uh, graduation cards um, they're like long so you can just put some cash or a check you can't hear me says Susan uh oh Susan do you have your volume on Ruby and Anita I know you're on can you hear me oh perfect your fault excellent I like because I don't know how to fix that um, because I turned the volume down on my computer so that I don't get an echo, but if other than that, I don't know what to do. Awesome. Okay. So welcome. Um, I'm Christine Josty of Mill Something Pretty. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and sometimes I don't introduce myself. So um, try to do that. Thanks, Anita. I try to do that. Um, I will try to do that for upcoming videos um, so you know who I am and where you can find me. Um, so all my stuff is, is through kind of Mail Something Pretty. Great. Okay. So we're going to make our project, um, and maybe I will give one away uh, at the end. So, okay, so let me flip my camera. Give me two seconds here to flip and spin. And I promise you, when I have time, when that is, that I don't know, um, I'm going to look into that stream yard so that I don't have to keep doing that. All right, so I'm going to... Pull this back. I just want you to see my whole workspace. Let's see. Put that here. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. So these are um, three examples. The weight on here. I don't know if you can see. There we go. Three examples um, of these cards. That one's in an envelope that I'm going to show you how to make. Um, so Mary Nab, I think that's how you say her name. She's a demonstrator. I forget where. She had actually posted, um, with, so on Stampin' Up! We have a couple different Facebook pages just for demonstrators. So she had posted it, one of these, um, and I really liked it, and I thought it was perfect for graduation. I have a um, double graduation party this weekend. It's a brother and sister, one graduate high school, one graduate college. So um, I thought these were great. So you just pull them out. And you have um, a little sleeve to put your money, either um, money or a check or even a gift card can slide in there. And so this is the first one I made and I really liked it and I thought Kate would like it. And um, oh, my money's tucked in this one. I'll show you in a second. I put the money in and it wasn't quite wide enough. So I think when I originally made it, and I'm going to show you a couple of my mistakes, I didn't, I did the glue too thick because I followed her instructions and the measurements and everything. Um, but I'll show you in a second. So then I, I think I made this one after I realized it. I made a more of a masculine one. Same thing it was a little narrow. So I retweaked. These are my original directions. I kept crossing out, retweaking, retweaking. And so, um, now I have nice and clear directions for you. Um, so I changed my measurements. So I also made an envelope. See before I show you. So these are the um, they come in a pack of three colors: white, gray, and I should say the real names. Basic white. I I don't know if that's smoky or gray granite and soft succulent. And so they're these slimline envelopes. So they came last year in the um, occasions catalog, and they carried over, which we're very happy about in the um, new annual. So you can see they're pretty close in size to a legal size or business size envelope. Um, but 
my cards didn't quite match, right? I didn't have this paper, and so I decided to make an envelope that matched because I know you would want to do that too. So then um, I just kind of created this little closed system here. Oop. It's a little tucked in there. Oh shoot, that didn't come out so pretty. It's, <laughs> it's stuck in there. All right, let's try this again. There we go, there's the envelope. And this pulls out and then you have your money in it. So this one is a little bit wider. It's like a quarter of an inch than this one because my money fits in there. Whereas my money doesn't quite fit in that one. So it just looked, it didn't look right to me. So I adjusted it. So now this one fits in here. At least it fits in the in my little card and then it tucks in so that's what we're gonna make today although we're gonna use this pattern we're gonna make this pattern but this wide and we'll make an envelope too okay so let's move some of this stuff out of the way so I can show you how to make it all right so let me just check the comments excellent all right Good. I'm glad you like them. All right. So here, I'm just leaving those there. If you want to take a screenshot or if you want to write them, I'll try to keep them somewhere on screen. Hopefully you can read them okay um, as we get going. Actually, I'm going to move them over a little bit. All right. So I have a couple things pre-cut and pre-done and some that are not. So we're going to start with just the basics piece of cardstock. I'm using early espresso um, to make, I'm doing more of a masculine one, and my um, my cousin's son really likes cars. He likes more fancier cars, but I thought he would like that. And it's also good for Father's Day. All right, so I have uh, my pocket base is uh, seven and a half square, seven and a half by seven and a half. Again, these are my measurements. I have adapted Mary Nab's measurements because I didn't think, for me, it was not quite wide enough. All right, so I'm gonna actually cut, I'm gonna cut it this way first because we're actually gonna use this piece. All right, so seven and a half. Oh, I'm gonna need that. By seven and a half. All right, this piece we do not need. All right, so that's my square. So now it doesn't really matter uh, for scoring purposes because it's going to be the same side. So we're just going to do one side. So I'm going to score it two and a quarter and five and three quarters. All right, and so I might as well cut this while I hear. This is that piece that was left over. So this is my insert. So I want it to be three and a quarter. So we're just going to cut off just a tiny piece, just this little sliver. We don't need that by seven and a quarter. All right. And I think, oh, actually we do need that. I'm going to put the arm in. I'm done with that for a minute. All right, so this is the piece that gets folded over, right, for the pocket, and then this is the piece that will go inside. So I'm just going to use my bone folder to give it a good placement there. Okay, so um, I'm gonna give you a couple tips that Mary gave, said on her video, because I thought they were good ones. It doesn't really matter if you glue this side to this side, but what I liked is um, she said glue the smaller piece on top because then it's kind of centered. And what we're going to do is actually we're gonna put our piece on top. So then it's almost like it's seamless. And it's fine if you had the seam in the back, it's not a big deal, but might as well just kind of hide the seam. So what I'm gonna do is put glue, just thin, do this too, because I just cleaned off my teal. Um, I'm just gonna try to do thin strips, so just, a thin one on the bottom 
So I'm going to close the wider piece first. And then I'm going to put just a thin, hopefully, thin piece of glue just on that edge and close that. I'm just going to press that for a minute. All right, thanks for the tip. I love to give tips. Hopefully they're helpful ones. <laughs> Sometimes they might not be. Okay, so this is one of my mistakes. I am not ashamed of showing you my mistakes. When I, we're gonna cut to make that opening. Don't cut the glue side because then you have two sides that are open. So this is the side we just glued shut. So we wanna cut the opening side. Oops. I'm going to use, um, I don't even know what this is called. It's, a, it's in the catalog, it has two ovals, a scallop oval and your regular oval. I'm gonna turn my punch upside down and again, I'm gonna put the opening side in through the top of the punch. I'm going to do two things. I'm gonna to try to eyeball so it's equal-ish, you know, on both sides there. And I also wanna make sure I have less than half. So I'm gonna actually, and I'll show you why in a second. So I have less than half here, and I'm gonna punch it. Punches through the both pieces. And the reason why I like less than half, so this one I did a little bit more, is so it's an oval, and I, because I went a little bit more than half, the angle of the oval you can kind of see. So I just want it more of, can you see the difference there? I just want it opening up. I don't want it to have that closed part. All right, so then I'm gonna take And I already cut this piece, um, so, oh, I didn't even write it on here. Let's write it on here. I have it on my other one. So my, I'll just put it here, my DSP or the front pattern is three and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Okay, so I just did that one right there. So that's what this is. And you could measure, right? If you already took a screenshot, you could measure your pocket and it's just a quarter inch smaller. So what we're gonna do here is we need to get this scallop, you know, this shape here. I'm going to take my edge of my pattern paper and align it flush to the um, edge, right? So it's flush to the edge there. And then I'm gonna turn this over and I'm going to just go back in with my punch and punch it like that. So then when I scoot it down, we get a nice little um, espresso border right there. So it just kind of finishes it off. And now I'm just going to glue that on there. Oh, it started to rain. I can hear it. Okay. I'm going to put this down. You may have heard earlier I had dropped something. I'm hoping I don't need anything that I dropped on the floor. <laughs> we'll find out. All right, so there's the pocket. Okay, so the pocket's kind of done. So the next thing we're going to do is the insert. So I already cut this piece. And I've already cut my white, right? So that's the same kind of thing, quarter inch smaller. So my insert is three and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And the white is three by seven. And then I put the dollar pocket. So that's this pocket. So Mary had done hers just solid color to match, but I thought, why not make it, you know, use up the pattern. So I thought it was kind of pretty. So that piece is three by four. So I've already cut it. And this is where we need our, cut, our trimmer again. All right, 
So we're going to cut. So this was this. So we're just going to a diagonal. Um, I'm not too picky about the um, how deep it's going to be, but I want to make sure that I cut from this corner down. So I'm going to put this corner in my cutting my track here. So the corner's in there, and then it really doesn't matter how much I cut off like that. All right, so make sure I glue this right. I don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> I'll show you in a second. So the white's just going to go straight down. And the white is there. You don't need it, but it's there because I will probably write a message. Right, so I'll tuck the money and I'll probably write a message underneath. But you could certainly put like a circle or write your message on the front. Let's see. Yes, Perrine, we are. Oh, you're on vacation, Susan, and you're watching. You are crazy. You are crazy. Yeah, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna get a pretty decent watering, so your garden should be all set. All right. So now I want to make sure I'm just gonna put glue on this edge and this edge. And I thought this was clever of her too, because then you have this just to slide in the the money. It makes it a little easier. Um, and I wanted to show you, she was trying to conserve some of her white, so she didn't have it go all the way down. I didn't think that much was that much to waste, but I also noticed, now again, she did a um, solid card stock, so it was a little thicker, and where I did thinner, but I can see that and feel that kind of line, so I just was picky, I didn't like that. So I did the full white, and then, oh shoot. I cut this before, darn it, I cut this um, <laughs> before I widened it. All right, so you know what we're going to do? We're going to jump ahead a little bit. I'm sure this happens to you. So first of all, wait, we need to make adjustments on here. So this needs to be, oh, three, why did... Oh, right, because it used to be the, the one I was doing, the one she did. So this is correct. Okay. So I think, yeah, we have enough. This is my envelope paper, which we'll do the envelope in a second. So I'm just going to borrow from it. All right, so I'm going to do three. So I know, I don't think Nancy's on right now, but she says she loves it when I make mistakes. I make them all the time. But I also, and I don't mind showing you my mistakes because I like to show you how I, I can fix them or I can try to fix them. All right, so I'm gonna do that again. Let's put the diagonal here. So hopefully this is right. And this, all right. So my pocket's just going to have a different pattern. That's fine. It's going to match the envelope. I planned that all along. Okay, so we just want glue on this side and this side. So this side, the bottom, and this side. And this is where you want, I probably didn't even do it. This is where you want it really close to the edges because it, you need that room to slide in your money or your check. All right, so let that sit for a second. Okay, so this is the new pocket. This actually, look at that, it looks really pretty together. This was the other one, which looks nice. Oh yeah, that will still work, my little doodads here. Okay, so now, almost done. All right, let me leave these here for a second. So, I don't know where to put stuff. I used, um, I think it's He's All That, the um, paper. I think that's, it's called something like that. Um, and then this is the, the dies that go with the stamp set, which I didn't really do too much stamping, so I didn't use that stamp set. But I just want to show you, um, these dies actually, what I like about them is they have some nice label shapes, so the oval whatever shape this is, a, a kind of a nice medallion circle and another rectangle. So I love the shapes, but I use the Argyle 
It comes with two, which is really handy. So I've already cut them out. And this is just for decoration. I think I'm still gonna put that on there. I think that will be okay. So I'm just gonna put some glue just kind of behind these big um, rhombuses, right? Or diamonds. So I'm not gluing the whole thing because really Jake's not gonna care. He's just gonna like the money that's in there. But I know that I did a nice presentation. And I have two for the front. And I know I had, because I saw it, here it is. I stamped congratulations in Cajun Craze to match the Cajun Craze paper. And I used, this carried over, but I just bought it. Um, I like I like the font, so I use this congratulations. Um, I think it's a set I'm going to use a lot. I, I just, I like, I just like the font of it. Um, and I think there's a bunch of them, you know, I'll use the heart, sympathy, I'll use peace, love, and joy for Christmas. Um, so anyways, I thought it was a good one. So that's where it came from. And then the shape of the cutout, I've used these a few times with you guys, or, um, I use this one. So this is from the stylish shapes, which is new. Yes, Kim, a happy accident. A lot I can't tell you how much of my creativity is happy accidents. All right. So this is going to line up. Looks all right. So same thing. I'm just putting the glue behind the little, the big parts and just a little part. Because I don't want too much glue to seep through. These would work great with those, um, the adhesive sheets. You stick the adhesive sheets onto the cardstock card stock first and then you um run it through your machine and then you just peel off and the whole thing is sticky oh that's one piece that didn't punch out there we go And the, oh, that's what fell. Let's see. My oh, they didn't fall from me. Far from me, though. My dimensionals. Just grab them. Okay. I'll put one on each side. And then, oh, then we have to do the one thing on the top, and then I'll show you how I made the envelope. All right. Congratulations. And then... So I used, and actually I kind of like it, so I'm going to do it again. I used the kind of the, the shorter but thicker. I don't even know what these shapes are called. They're not pennants. I guess banners, right? So I used this banner shape, and I cut it same with espresso. You could also do the same thing with that punch that I just used, the scallop. And what you do is you just fold them in half. because I didn't think he was gonna want ribbon, right? So I did ribbon for my, for his sister. I didn't think he would want ribbon. So I did this little pull part. So I'm actually gonna put it in here first just so I can kind of see where it lines up. And you could pull it all the way down, but I kind of like how you can see the little tips there. Turn it around and you can either glue it down, right? Because this is pretty strong glue or I'm using, this is an old Stampin' Up! stapler that I love because it, you, um, it's just handheld with one hand, but that makes the staples go this direction, whereas the other staples, I guess, go in the other direction. So that's how I put it on. But you could punch a hole and use a brad. You could tie a ribbon, however you want. Um, you could do it with a scallop but I kind of I kind of like that. It just went with the edges of the argyle. So now when you pull it out, there you go. All right. So let me clean this stuff up a little bit and I'll show you how to make the envelope. Again, you can use this is the like a business side size, so that's fine. Or again, this is the those slimline envelopes and that would work. And that doesn't, that matches it good enough. Um, but 
Let me show you. This needs a little room in my sample. I'm going to show you how I made that envelope. That one with my whale one. Okay. So you already saw the paper because I already cut a piece out. And this is from that same set, the um, He's the Man, or um, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it. So what I did, since I knew that this card was going to fit inside the slimline envelope, right? I knew it would fit in there. And it's a little long, and I tried to make it a little shorter, but then I didn't take an account for this, so I'm leaving it the same size that it is. I carefully took it apart, just took one apart, and then I measured like where the score lines were so that you can see it better on here. So we're going to cut this brown paper in a second, eight and a quarter by 11, and then we're going to score it. So let me actually just do that. And this is, it's really kind of, it's thin, but strong. I don't know if you remember a few years ago, they had what was called envelope paper. And that's kind of like what it is. So the designer paper is fine, but it's, it's slightly different. It'll be fine. All right, let me open this up again. So eight and a quarter wide. By 11. Right, let me double check, yep. All right, so that's the size of our envelope. So I'm gonna score it holding portrait ways, so this way, I'm gonna score it at two and a half, <coughs> excuse me, two and a half and six and a quarter. So, two and a half. You don't wanna pull down too hard on that because you could rip the paper, six and a quarter. Sometimes the quarter is hard to see on this one because of the, the where the arm is. So I made, can you see it on here? I don't know if you can see it on here. I made a little paint mark so I know where my quarter mark is because it's right in the, right before the, um, where the elbow moves. Okay, so I have those two. I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna score at one and a half and 10 and a quarter. So one and a half and 10 and a quarter. And then I say cut off all four corners. So I'm gonna cut these four corners off just with scissors. So don't be afraid to take some things apart to see how they're constructed. That's kind of how I learn how things are put together. I figured it was worth the sacrifice of one of my envelopes. Just cutting on the score lines. Okay. Well, that's going to be the bottom. So that's what it looks like. So then I'm going to fold. Put on these score lines. Put that one up. And this one up. So it comes together like that. And then this will, you may have to re after you fold it up. Okay, so I can leave it like that flat, but I think instead I'm just gonna kinda notch these. They'll fold better. The, um, the slimline ones, they're a little curved. And then same with this piece, you have this kind of edging. You could take um, this, other, we have enough different dies that you can make an edge with that. But instead, I'm just going to do what I did on the, um, the bottom is just notch. 
and I'm eyeballing it. So then we're gonna glue it close. So I'm gonna, again, just put a little glue on the edge there. Here. I'm just going to put it along the edge. Close that. So really, that's our envelope. So you have a couple options on how to seal it. You could um, take washi tape or a sticker or something to close it. But instead, what I did on that whale one is I did... Oh, it's like attached everywhere. You know those envelopes that have the string that kind of wrap around? I thought that looked cool. So what I did was I have some string and oh, there it is. with my punch and I now brought up a little piece. Oh, here it is. So this is a three quarter inch circle, which I know they don't sell anymore. Um, I'm sure you can find something. So I'm just going to do two circles and I used dimensionals just to put it on you could you could um like I know some people put brads you'd have to put the brad on but somehow before you sealed it shut um but for that reason I'm just using a dimensional I'm gonna put that right in the middle give it a good squish and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one right in the middle give it a, oh no oh, actually hold on I got one part. Take that off. We'll start that over. We are going to put our string on first. So I think I'm just going to use linen thread, but these are the neutrals pack. Plus there's white that's not in here, but these, any of those would work too. What I meant to do was I'm going to put just the edge of the linen thread and put it under a dimensional. Give that a good squish. And then attach it. Come right there. Like that. So that way it's attached. So let's put our card in. Or actually, no. I'm, let's pretend our card's in there. And then I'm just going to wrap it around. And you can decide how many. Just four times is fine. And I'm just going to cut it. So that's how I sealed the envelope. What do you think? Let me put all this stuff here so you can see what we did. So I'll take that out, make it look pretty, and I'll put that there. And I have pictures too. I'll post on the blog so you can um, you oh you can take pictures or whatever. So so the money just slides right in, or the check, or the gift card, or you can even fold it, you know, and put it in that way. If you want to make sure that they see the message and not just leave the money in there. Or a gift card would slide in there or a check is the same size as cash. So it all kind of fits in there. All right. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Yay. All right. So I have some notes here. I wanted to tell you two things that are going on. And then um, I'm going to actually give, not the money, but I'm going to give one of these away. So um, I'm telling you guys first, I didn't even write an email today. The last chance has started for um, this mini catalog. This is the January through June. It retires the end of the month. So this is actually, no, actually, I was going to say this is where I got the paper, but it wasn't. I got it from the new catalog. Um, this is retiring this month, so they put some things on sale already, so be sure if there's anything on your wish list from that catalog, be sure to check it out um, to see if it's on sale, because once it's gone, it's gone. It's kind of like a, a month of it's retiring and, and they're not going to restock anything that sells out. So that's happening, and then um, for the whole month of June, they're doing a kit sale, so, oh, I should have brought a kit up. I'll have to do that maybe next week. I have a kit. Um, their kits are buy one, get one half off. And they're doing the more expensive kit 
at the half off and you because usually people do the lesser expensive ones so that was kind of cool that they did that so all the kits um there's there's they have, call them card kits and crafted kits um and some have most have stamping but there are a couple kits that don't have stamping um so all the kits are buy one get one half off um and they make great gifts sub our activities um i was even thinking um I actually, I did write a blog post about this. There's a new kit that started today and it's like, a, um, it's really cute. It's a memory book um, and it's perfect for summer. So if you have, I mean, it can be for an adult, but to me it looked kind of um, fun. So I thought for kids uh, as a summer journal, or if you know anyone who does birthday parties, that could be both the activity and the favor. Um, so anyways, you can check that post out on my blog because I wrote that this morning. So those are the two kind of specials going on for Stamp It Up. Okay, so I'm going to try this out because this is what um, Mary Nab did actually on hers, and I, I thought it was a good idea. So anyone between now and noon, because I know that we will have some people watching on the replay, so I want to include you too, um, who writes um, cash card in the comment up until noon. We, I will randomly pick a winner, um, and then I will mail you this. A surprise so if that works out i'll try to do that um maybe every week or every other week or something um so just write cash card in the comments and you'll be entered to win and i'll pull the winner at noon tomorrow noon eastern time all right so let me check these comments here um janie thinks it's pretty i'm so happy susan loves it anita loves it awesome um gina said great cards Chrissy writes, this is my first time seeing live. Will the measurements be putting on your Facebook page? That is a good question. Um, I don't usually do that, but you could rewatch it. And, and I'll just leave this right here so you can see it and um, pause it and write them down. Um, because this won't be on my blog. So hopefully you can see it. Take a screenshot. All the measurements should be there. Um, all right. People are starting to write cash card. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. So thank you so much for watching. Um, feel free to share this video too, because you want to get your friends in on uh, the action, so to speak. Um, but I think it's a fun project and you can adapt it with all sorts of papers you already have, or if you want new papers for, um, gifts and of all year long. All right. Thank you. Let's see. Can you pick it up a bit? Yes. Let's see. Tell me, let's see. There's a little delay on here. Yeah, that's good. I'll just hold that. That should be good. It should look clear. Excellent. All right. You are welcome, Susan. Have fun in the Berkshire Mountains. It's awesome. And I can't believe you're doing this on your vacation. You should be, I don't know, reading a book. Okay. Hopefully that's long enough. Oh, you're welcome, Jeannie. Okay. Excellent. I'll hold it up there for a couple more seconds. And then I will sign off. Go wet my throat. Awesome. 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 Okay. Thank you again for watching. Um, I hope you liked the project. I think you did. And I'll, help, I'll come up with another project. But I will be here same time, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, next week, next Wednesday. And we'll come up with another project. So thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.